quick play is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a match that lasts 15 minutes with up to 12 solo players. It offers a bit more of a traditional battle royale point of view. The last man standing takes all. The objective is to be the first to close four rifts and activate what is known as the wellspring. The quicker you activate it, the more energy the wellspring has. More energy means more XP, but you must survive its duration. So what is the point in playing Quick Play? If you survive, Quick Play offers you a free Hunter. The Hunter comes equipped with any weapons, tools and consumables that you found, including any traits that you discovered through closing rifts. Not only that, but your Hunter will also be leveled and you'll have points to spend on traits. Even if you're not happy with any of the traits, you can use Blood Bonds to respec. Now there's no argument about it, these soul survivors have the potential to be better equipped with a head start over any hunters that you can recruit and the best part about it is that they are free. Since the release of 1.2 you can now carry up to 4 tools and 4 consumables. Now it's good to note that quick play can prepare you for bounty hunt. Although luck based, finding and choosing the right weapons or the right situation and scenario you may find yourself in is sometimes crucial to successfully winning a quick play match. And you never know, sometimes you might find that all that stands between you and victory is a ghillie suited saber wielding tier 3 hunter emerging from the bushes. Before you start a quick play, you get to choose your hunter character skin. You get to choose from 5 based on your tier level. These random skins renew after every match. Here you can also choose a random weapon based on category, whichever suits your playstyle. Let's get stuck straight into a quick play match. We'll go through two matches with two very different outcomes, with the purpose of demonstrating approach and strategy, with a little bit of expectation that I hope may demonstrate and prepare you for any scenarios that can occur. Here I have managed to find myself with a hand crossbow. Not my favorite, but it has its uses. Luckily, right where we've spawned, there is a caravan. Caravans appear randomly during quick play. Caravans also have set spawn points within the map. Now we approach the compound. Once locating the rift through dark sights, we head towards the building. Here's a good opportunity to point out the importance of audio in the game. I've just heard a hunter who has aggravated PVE and I can hear the clue has turned red indicating that there is someone nearby. Knowing full well that he is in the building with the rift, rather than be aggressive and not knowing what guns this hunter has, I will be a little bit more patient and take my time, as that hunter will also be aware of my presence perhaps. The patrolling meathead offers a bit of a barrier between us and them. Hopefully this should ensure that they are not going to use those doors to come out of the building anytime soon. And likewise, if we are going to enter the building, we certainly won't use that entrance. From certain angles, we can peek inside the building, and if we position ourselves in the courtyard, we might be able to get a glimpse. With quick play, a certain amount of pressure does come with the game. You want to aim to get all four rifts closed, as surviving with four traits is obviously better than anything less. 
my only concern at this stage is that if we are concentrating on one enemy hunter, we leave ourselves exposed to others. As we spawned in the very top right of the map, it is very unlikely that another hunter will come along. But this is a hunt and anything can happen. Map knowledge in Hunt is absolutely paramount, as is the layout of buildings, but this is something that will come in time with experience. So let's look at the map. So we are here, and we know the building the enemy hunter is in, and at a quick glance he hasn't left yet. There are two exits out of sight. We have a northeast exit and a southeast exit. There is nothing to say that he won't use these exits, but through process of elimination, as we have four other exits on the other side of the building. So in this scenario, it's probably better to assess by probability. And that will determine our positioning. Going back down the road leaves the entire compound accessible to the enemy hunter. So we will position ourselves back in the courtyard. So with some little assessment and a bit of patience, we have eliminated the enemy hunter. quick glance at the map to put our next course as we spent a little bit longer than I would have liked as we look to leave Salter's Pork it's good to note that on each map there are three compounds that offer two rifts this is the same as in Bounty Hunt as the same compounds will offer two clues on Lawson Delta we have Fort Karmic Nichols of Prison which is no longer available to us and Lawson Station as Lawson Station is the closest, that is the direction we will head in, in hope that picking up two clues will make up for lost time. As we head towards Lawson Station, we can hear some gunshots. Obviously, PvP is bound to happen more frequently during quick play. How you decide how you want to play is up to you. I personally prefer to play the objective to gain the wellspring, closing the four rifts as quickly as possible and let everyone come to me. Of course, as demonstrated and as we're about to find out, sometimes PvP cannot be avoided. Again, demonstrating the importance of audio, from this range we have just heard another hunter be killed. As we approach closer to the clue, we can use the audio from the Armoured Grunt to try and assess where this hunter is. We know that this particular enemy hunter is still here, and as we approach closer still, we can hear the clue is red. So now it's all about trying to get the right position to get eyes on. Again, utilizing audio, we can just hear that he is healed up. I choose to keep my distance here to try and get a better angle at him. 
Without really knowing what weapons this hunter had, playing aggressive doesn't always pay off. Had I rushed into the building after him, it could have been a very different outcome. We now need to get a move on and close the second rift. At this stage in this match, I already feel that we have spent far too much time dealing with the first hunter, and the journey to Lawson Station hasn't paid off as we only have one rift to close. And with that, someone else has already activated the Wellspring. We'll have a quick look at the map just to plot our journey towards him. And we'll have a brief look around just in case there's anything of use, as we have plenty of time. No amount of guides will help you deal with these f***ing demon spawn. A well-timed melee attack, shots to the head or body at optimal range, or just simply best avoided. PvE can be completely unpredictable. Monsters will get in the way. And now, seeing as I don't have any healing items, it would be best to try and find some health before we take on the Wellspring Holder. On approach and using dark sight to give us a better understanding of where the wellspring holder is, I usually prefer a more stealthier approach. We are surrounded by PvE, so to not tempt fate, we will try and avoid everything at our best. As we get closer to the compound, let's take a look at the map and break down the plan of approach. From the direction we came in, we could hit the east side or the front of the compound, the side from the north or what is considered the back entrance of more battery. To me, this is the most logical approach. As there is less land behind the compound, we should have our backs covered from any of the hunters coming into play, and in all likeliness they'll be coming in from the east side. The back building here not only gives us the biggest opening to look inside the main building, but it also features a sloped roof for cover, so the plan will be to position ourselves on that building. Now there is some risk involved here because there are no easy exits to cover on that side of the main building. From the first floor of the building there is a north exit and a south exit. There are two east side exits, one on the ground level and one from the first floor. Both these exits are completely out of sight and they offer access to the rest of the compound or escape. As we're applying pressure from the back of the compound, this could be a very likely scenario. After you've activated the wellspring, it very much becomes a game of defense. So this wellspring holder might not take the chance of escape if this main building provides a decent amount of safety. 
So to sum it up, we should be safe from other hunters so we can fully concentrate on the Wellspring Holder. And as we don't know what weapons the Wellspring Holder has, we're at an optimal range to get a better idea. It's also good to bear in mind that as the Wellspring Holder, you will be limited to where you can move to. This is represented by an area of circumference around the map, and leaving this circle will start draining your hunter's life. So let's find some health and let's see how this goes. I should also add that the circle does not affect non-wellspring holders, so we still need to be on the lookout for players coming in from the east side. Keeping your health top top at all times is a good tip. If you haven't picked up any healing items yet, medkits can be found scattered all over the map. We'll take the ladder up to position ourselves on the back building. Although the roof of the building is sloped and does provide cover, it is made of tin metal and will provide audio clues of my whereabouts to anyone else in the compound. The enemy hunter here is quite active around the main building. It is important to keep using Dark Sight just to maintain an idea of where he is holding up at and to make sure that he doesn't escape. Arguably, even after the first couple of shots haven't connected, it is worth your time to change positions. But as this building tactically gives us an advantage, we'll try and hold an angle at the window. We are still at optimal range and missed shots are still pressure on the wellspring holder. After a hit, it is inevitable they will try and heal up. There is no harm in trying to go for a wall bang shot. You may get lucky. As we come down to our last magazine, it's probably worth our time now trying to play a little bit more aggressive. It's extremely important to use your consumables at any point. As it's safe to say that this hunter doesn't have a rifle and he has been using his pistol shooting at me, no doubt probably carries a shotgun. Pushing into the building is probably still not a good idea. Holding an angle at this window still might pay off. Firebomb being thrown does give us the indication that there are other players in the compound that have come in from the east side. As the now new wellspring holder, it's probably better to get back to some place of cover, as we are out in the open. And that concludes our first quick play match. There are, of course, other intricate details, such as movement and line of sight, that I hope to go over in a later video. Let's go over some of the key points picked up from this match. 
we touched on the importance of audio and it's perhaps the most important factor that Hunt has to offer. It gave us insight to the whereabouts of enemy hunters as well as a total understanding of situations as they unfolded. Understanding your surroundings as I first said is something that will come in time but by utilizing Darkseid and checking the map you can keep on top of situations imminently and further away. Specific to quickly, early on we found a caravan. Caravans can contain some of the best loot the game has to offer. They don't show up on the map, so keep your eyes open for them. Loot can always be found around the rift, but as you are entering or leaving a compound, always have a good scan for weapons and items of use. And of course, remember to always keep your health topped up. Let's go straight into our second match. Let's take a look at the map. As we spawn just north of Golden Acres, I can easily already plot my course and I hope to go to Lawson Station to pick up the two clues and then potentially onto Sweet Bell or Arden to pick up the fourth. In this match, I will try and demonstrate speed and aggression moreover than stealth and patience as we aim to get the wellspring as fast as possible. It's handy to take out horses, dogs and chickens as fast as possible as their ongoing audio cues can alert you to others. Most importantly, your exact positioning and whereabouts. So regardless of playing loud and aggressive, it's always best to take out these audio cues. We've looked out here again at Lawson Station, only picking up one of two clues. So we'll move on to Sweet Bell Flower and see if we can pick up that third clue and assess where to go next.
fort looks like the likeliest destination. And if we manage to pick up the fourth clue and the wellspring, then we will be in a great defensive position. We have found another caravan supply point on the way. It's always best to check out what they have to offer. I wouldn't ever go out of my way to search for one of these supply points. So it's always a bonus to find one on your path, especially if you're playing with speed in mind. Now that we have hit the fourth rift and activated the wellspring, it's time to check our surroundings for any other loot that we can use for defensive purposes. Personally for me, I prefer the higher ground. This is so that I can get an overall 360 view if possible to determine what is happening and keep track of any other incoming enemy players. Utilizing bear traps scattered around the world are a great deterrent for players taking the path that you choose. Bear traps can also provide decent audio cues if disabled. Now that we have established ourselves on the roof with the most minimum of defences, let's take a look at Fort Karmic. We're currently here on top of the south building. I personally think this is one of the most cheesiest and easiest places to defend that Lawson Delta has to offer. From up here we can practically break any line of sight and giving us the high ground gives us a huge advantage. So if you have a particular hunter skin or a weapon that you want to escape with and guarantee victory this is the place to be. Only the north building offers direct access marked here. At the same level we have a gangway on the west side. Out of sight there is a north entrance, and on the west side of the exterior of the building we have a couple of ladders allowing access to the upper levels. You won't have sight of any hunter activity within the building itself, so this is where audio comes in handy. There are two other direct means of access to the southern roof. On the southeast outer wall there is an elevator, however use of this elevator is a huge giveaway. The second is directly from within the southern building itself, as there is a ladder from the first floor giving direct access to the roof here. As long as we remain active we can get a scope on everything that goes on around the fort. The north and south entrances are very popular, and although we can see most of the outskirts of fort, these two areas break line of sight, allowing quick entrance into the fort grounds if we're not looking. From the outside, the east wall provides two entrances also, and on the inner side of the wall, two exits. Anyone using the stairs to get access to the top level of the east wall will have to be quick to find cover, as we can see the entirety of the east wall from the roof. The top layer of the west wall is completely derelict, but at ground level it offers lots of nooks and crannies and is dark enough for any hunter to remain concealed. From outside there is only one direct entrance to the west wall and that is through a gate. Now that we have covered our surroundings, we can prepare ourselves for any scenario.
we can hear a player using the gate on the west side of fort. The west wall provides multiple entrances into the courtyard, and some good spots to peek from from the cover of darkness. From up here on the roof, we can easily break line of sight, but I feel it's always better to be a bit more proactive with incoming enemy hunters. Crows from the northeast also indicate that there is another player coming in. The first enemy player has entered the northern building in Fort. Utilizing a poison bomb should deter him from using that crossover path. would appear that the first enemy hunter has actually shifted over to the east side of the wall and failed here to find himself any suitable cover. Shots in the distance provide clues of a third player coming in. We can hear the use of a ladder below us to the north. The use of a second ladder indicates that someone has reached the same level as us. The second enemy hunter here has actually managed to find himself up top on the gangway. 
with both the bear trap and the poison bomb in place, it would seem that it's enough deterrent to keep him away from using that crossover. With the timer running down and confined to the same spot, it leaves him vulnerable. Remaining in the same position is never a good idea, but we haven't given him many options. The third hunter emerges, pressured for time, making for an easy kill. And that concludes our second quick play match. So what are some of the key points we can take from it? Speed is a huge factor in quick play. It helps you reach the main objective as well as positioning and providing more time to prepare defense. However, the only drawback to speed where quick play is concerned is finding that extra time to find weapons, items and consumables that you may need to successfully defend the wellspring. So it's extremely important to try and find a balance here, especially where attacking is concerned where a stealthier approach is probably better. There are of course many other points that I'd like to touch on, but we will do this in a later video. Hopefully from this there has been something of use to help you with Hunt Showdown. The reason why I started episode 1 kicking off with quick play is because I believe it is a very undervalued game mode and I wanted to get stuck straight into something that provided some of the core elements the game has to offer. Future episodes will of course include bounty hunts, the menus and settings, loadouts, weapon handling and the monsters including the bosses themselves. And at some point I will revisit quick play with more tips and in-depth strategies. If there's anything you liked or disliked about this video, please let me know in the comments below. And be sure to catch me at any of these other socials.